Piranhas are quite formidable fish, given their powerful bites and ability to quickly devour their food, have garnered a formidable reputation, and while often over-exaggerated, are still formidable predators considering their size. A close relative, that being the Paku, a group of fish that comprises many different genera of fish, are in many cases larger than their more carnivorous relatives, with some reaching lengths of 1 metre and 40 kilograms in weight. The common name Paku is used to refer to several species of these omnivorous South American freshwater, Ceracelmid fish, and differ from piranhas in that they have a different jaw alignment, with piranha having a pronounced underbite, whereas Paku have a less severe one or even a slight overbite. Piranha also have pointed serrated teeth, and Paku, as we'll get into more depth later on, have very different teeth that is surely their most famous trait. Paku are also popular with aquarists, although many as small as 5 to 8 centimetres are sold off to customers who are not told of how big the fish will eventually grow, which has led to many illegally releasing their Paku into the wilds of wherever they are kept, when they inevitably grow too large. They have therefore ended up in many places outside their native range, both in South America and other continents, including several reports from the United States, Thailand, India, and even in northern areas of Europe near Sweden and Denmark. They have also been introduced to parts of New Guinea in the Sepik and Ramu rivers, where they are utilised as a food source due to the overfishing of native species, and as a primarily vegetarian fish, consume vast quantities of floating mats of vegetation, which operate as vital fish nurseries and for crocodile and bird nesting sites, impoverishing the native ecosystem and in turn the local peoples in the process. Thankfully, many of these released paku do not survive in the long term to successfully breed with other released fish, as in areas like Northern Europe, the cold waters of these regions are often sufficient enough to either make them stop feeding and starve, or just freezing them to death. In recent years, a rather humorous report came from the coast of Scandinavia, where it was heard from a Danish fisherman, Peter Moller, who was also a professor at the Copenhagen Museum of Natural History, had caught a South American paku amongst his eels and perch, and that male swimmers had to watch out for these fish, as the fish can apparently mistake male reproductive organs for tree nuts, a favourite food. The warning was in fact simply a joke that has gotten out of hand, and Muller never meant for his amusing warning to get so much publicity. The infamous teeth of the Paku are in fact designed for crushing seeds and nuts, which is why their unusual teeth are broad, flattened, and remarkably similar to human molars and premolars, crushing their food rather than ripping it apart or off. So thankfully, Paku aren't out for your genitals, although it would still be wise to avoid a bite. While not aggressive like the primarily carnivorous piranha, a bite from their powerful jaws is still capable of requiring surgery, at least when it comes to your fingers. Other fish that possess these eerily human-like teeth are the sheep's head fish, which instead of being used to crush nuts, are instead used for muscling their way through hard-shelled organisms like oysters, clams, crabs and barnacles. From what has been mentioned, possessing exotic animals, no matter where you are in the world, should always be for one acquired through a legal manner, and once in possession, should not be simply dumped into areas where they are not native, due to not understanding the animals themselves. While many of these exotic animals are indeed fascinating, many of them escaping or being released can prove disastrous if they escape captivity in sufficient numbers, such as the Paku in parts of New Guinea, and infamously, the rampant infestation of Burmese pythons and other exotic animals in Florida, where they have devastated the ecosystems they have ended up in. As such, in many cases, it is best to leave these animals in their own ecosystems, as the illegal and sometimes legal global pet trade can result in both the native and introduced animals suffering as a consequence. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to see more, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.